Hi, I'm Mark Weissman. Welcome back to this series of videos on the Feynman Heaviside formula. Um, right now, I'll give a quick derivation of the Leonard Weishart potentials, or how you pronounce those names French, German, turn of the century. Um, so let's just go back. We have our potentials, which I wrote in the Maxwell's equation solutions phi r, comma t equal 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. The integral d 3 r prime. I'm thinking I put the q in there, but the q is in the charge density, so I made a mistake in that video two, two videos ago. There shouldn't be any q there. Rho of r prime comma T minus absolute value of R minus R prime over C divided by the distance. And A is roughly the same as phi. It's got the mu zero over four pi and we got the J, rho goes to J. I don't want to write that down again. Um, the charge density is just a delta function. We have a charge moving along a path. So the charge density is just the charge Q times the delta function. This is a three-dimensional delta function, but I'm not going to write it. But the arguments are vectors, so you know it's a three-dimensional delta function. And R0 is the path of the particle. So basically, at a given time t, this has a certain value, and the potential is basically infinite at that position and zero everywhere else and integrates to one. Okay, the way to evaluate this potential is to complicate it a little at first. So we're going to write it down. one over four pi epsilon zero, the integral of d3 r prime. And now I'm just gonna put added variable here, t prime, the integral of t prime. So we're sort of adding another integral, but we'll see how that works. Rho of r prime comma T prime, absolute value, R minus R prime. And I didn't leave myself enough room, but this is times a delta function. And here's where we're going to make some more room. Delta of t prime minus t plus the absolute value of r minus r prime over c. So um, how does this work? Well, if you do the t prime integral, this is just a delta function. So you integrate over all time. That means you simply set the variable time so that this whole thing is zero. So that ends up being t minus r minus r prime over c, basically the retarded time, and that's what we have here. So for t prime in the row, that becomes there, this doesn't change. So it's clear that we haven't really done anything, but now we're going to reverse the order of integration, which is what theoretical physicists do. And um, until somebody tells us, some mathematician says stop, we're going to do it. So now this is equal to Um, okay, so now I'm going to substitute the delta function for rho, this over there. I'm just going to do it the easy way here. Q del r minus r0 
wraps up now. We're evaluating rho at t prime. So all we did was we substituted in the, um, the charge density in this integral. Now we're going to integrate over all space. Instead of doing the time integral, we're going to do the space integral first. So we have, again, a three-dimensional integration over all space. So we set, should be r prime. So we set r prime just equal to r zero t prime everywhere else in the formula, and that will be the evaluation. So this is going to be equal to q four pi epsilon zero, the integral, we're left with the t prime integral. And now we have delta over here, t prime minus t plus the absolute value of r. And instead of r prime, we now have r zero prime. r zero t prime over C divided by the absolute value of R minus R zero T prime. Okay, and um, using some of the notation that we used earlier, I'll just change the names of my variables a little bit. R is like R minus R zero. See, got T prime minus T plus R over C divided by R of T prime. Okay, so we've reduced our problem to um, one integral in the delta function, and this is not um, difficult at all. Um, you might, uh, you should remember this formula, del h of x is equal to the sum over m, 1 over the absolute value of h prime xm. times delta of x minus xm. And the idea here is that xm is defined by hxm equals zero. And so we take all simple roots, not equal to zero. So for our problem over there, our h, we have delta h, and we have a different name of variables, but basically our h of t prime is equal to t prime minus t plus r of t prime over c. And now let's evaluate this. There's only one root. I showed that in the other video. There's only one place where it hits the backward light cone. And we're going to define a new variable, call it g, which is the absolute value of the derivative h prime, what comes in this formula, at t prime. And this is equal to, when we take the derivative, we get the absolute value. The derivative with respect to t time becomes one plus one over c dr of t prime dt prime, absolute value. We don't, I don't think we really need the absolute value signs there, but this is equal to one plus one over c. And remember some of the formulas where we evaluated this, we did it at time t, but it doesn't really matter, the variables. It's the same here and there. And this is equal to minus 
n caret at t prime dot beta at t prime. So we'll be using this a lot. G ends up equaling 1 minus n caret t prime beta of t prime. This is g at t prime. And this is, for those of you who've seen the Leonard Weinkar potentials, this is the factor and the denominator. It's um, sort of like a Doppler effect. And Feynman gives a very good physical derivation in his um, chapter 20 or 21 lectures in volume 2. Um, so using these two things, our end result is that, let me put it right down here, the famous potential is phi of r comma t is equal to, from a moving point charge, q over 4 pi epsilon 0, 1 over g at t r and r at t r. And um, I'll just write down the definition of um, t r again. This is the retarded time. It's equal to t minus the absolute value of r of t r over c. Okay, and this is usually written We substitute in this, so we get 1 over r minus beta dot r. But all of this in brackets, when I put a subscript r, it means it's evaluated at this retarded time. So this is the famous um, scalar potential for the Leonard Weichart. And, um, if we want A, all we do, we put a, uh, put a V in the denominator, QV. You know. So we just multiply that by V. So it's, but it's, it's all evaluated. The V is also evaluated at that retarded time. So, um, this is a derivation of this. We're not actually going to use this result, but the way in which we got it, I'm going to use when we do the fields. That's why I presented this. So um, I'll see you in the next video where we'll just derive the uh, Leonard Weichardt fields. Bye-bye.